We want to talk about this dome of heat and what's causing it. Well, first off, we have our jet stream that is very far to the north. And what that means is a warm air can go as far north as, as a jet stream. So being it's almost in Canada, therefore we can get the heat all the way up to the border. And that's why we have the 90s and triple digits. Now, that also means that we have a ridge. When your jet stream bows up like that to Canada, you have a big high pressure in place. And when you have a high pressure, the hot air actually expands in the atmosphere. So the whole atmosphere just blows out like that. Kind of like if you have a big meal or you're feeling bloated. That's what's happening with this high pressure. Now within that, air is sinking because air comes in a loft and goes down to the surface. Sinking air actually heats up because within this big dome, you have these air parcels, okay? Within the air parcel, you have little pieces of energy, if you will. When you have that air parcel up top, it's very wide. When it sinks down and condenses, the parcels are closer together within that, so they're all bouncing around, causing friction, heating each other, and that's what's actually heating up the atmosphere. So what are the temperatures going to look like underneath this dome? Well, here into St. Louis, we have the heat. It's Yes, it's going to be warm, but it's the overnight lows that are going to cause a big problem with this heat wave. And then into D.C., this 100-degree day could be the first that we've seen in mm, four years. It's been since 2000. 2012 that we had 100 degrees. Now, you go from places like DC to the outskirts and you can have quite a different temperature range. And we want to talk more about that effect. It's called the urban heat island effect and why it's hotter in big cities versus when you go out of town just a little bit. Let's just use the first city you talked about as an example, St. Louis, uh, and the fact that we talked about a multi-day heat issue here. The heat can build on itself when you have a city. So let's take a look at the urban heat island effect. Uh, this has been very, very well documented here. You know, you have a city, especially like St. Louis, that, that's brick, that has uh, black tar roofs, uh, many roads, asphalt, that of yeah. course absorb the heat. And, you know, all that does is kind of add to the local heat effect from the heat of those buildings. Now, at night, instead of losing that heat uh, because you have vegetation around to kind of pull all that away, you don't. It stores the heat. You, you can walk up to a building even at 12 o'clock in the middle it. of the night and touch yeah. it, and it's still hot. So you're still em emanating heat. So now you're building the next day off right. of the heat wave. And Stephanie, what I think has really made the urban heat island effect uh, even worse over the years is the fact that we've expanded our cities mm -hmm. uh, and our city centers so far out. And now people are saying, look, I don't want that two-hour commute every way to work anymore. Right, want I want to come back into the city. So they're taking all the little green space and making buildings, cities and right. buildings out of it. So I think it's two things. I think it's two pronged with this. I think that yes, everything's absorbing it. So it's holding on to more heat, but it also has more heat to let go of at night opposed to the grass right. and the trees and the soil. And, and so what's happening is you're getting even even sometimes when you get thunderstorms over city there. It's like a little mini that heat dome that you talked yeah. about. It can happen outside that city and out into the vegetation as opposed to right over the center.